Hello, and welcome to Powerful Places Podcasts. I'm your host, Gary White, and today we will hear a conversation that Ellen and I had about Glastonbury, an enigma wrapped in a mystery. Here we are, back home in Girona, after more than a month in Glastonbury in Somerset, England. And um, doing this video is a bit like our experience in Glastonbury. Disruptive, chaotic, attractive, somehow compulsion to be there, um, very strange, and somehow doing this video is like that. The complexities, the starts, the stops, the sort of chaotic, disruptive nature of it. And yet there's something that drives you, that makes you feel deep inside that you want to do this video. So what is it? Well, what is it? Um, I think that part of it is uh, that I see uh, the complexities of Glastonbury. There is this Glastonbury that is, uh, what did you say, a, a spirit spiritual theme park. A spiritual theme park. Life is a trip. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Which uh, is part of Glastonbury today. Big tour buses arrive. Uh, every day dumping hundreds of tourists out and they go to the Abbey grounds and they go up High Street and shop in uh, an amazing array of uh, spiritual merchandise spiritual merchandising <laughs> yeah including yeah. Uh, stones and Wicca and goddess worship and esoteric this and that <laughs> and and bookstores and, and bookstores, yes. Clothing for your uh, full moon ceremony or your I mean, capes and, and, and people on the street in flowing robes with pointed hats and uh, and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and behind that uh, is another Glastonbury, and that Glastonbury. Uh, has an ancient history. Uh, the, the tour dominates the whole countryside around that. Yes, it's located, Glastonbury is located in what's called the Somerset Levels. And before extensive uh, sort of workings to, to keep out the sea, this whole area would become very marshy, if not actually submerged in water. It's I forget whether it's 40 miles from the sea or what it is. It's close or far, depending. But it used to be just, it, it would turn into an island. And um, it's just a very strange place. Yes. So the tour is this hill that's often described as conical, but only from a certain angle. From another angle, it's sort of like a whale's back. And on top of the tour is uh, the ruined, the Tower of St. Michael, all that remains of a ruined chapel that was destroyed several times. Um, but it is sacred land. It There's is. There's evidence that was probably a sacred site long before Christianity. Yep. And under this tour flow two streams of water that surface right near the tour. One red and one white. The which red, is yeah, the red <laughs> symbolic. With, sorry, iron. Yes. And the white with calcium. With calcium. But symbolic of fairy lore of forces, the red and blue white dragon that Merlin talks about, um, the blood and the milk. I mean, these are dichotomies. These are polarities that are, are of huge significance. And the two springs flow together and cross the grounds of Glastonbury Abbey, which is a ruined monastery. Massive ruined monastery. Used to be the most powerful in England supposedly based on, depending on who you read and what you think, or who you channel, or what psychic evidence you bring to bear, uh, founded perhaps by Joseph of Arimathea, uh, who maybe came there with Jesus during Jesus' missing years, 
At any rate, came back later by boat to Weirial Hill, because this too is an island and on the edge of Glastonbury. Climbed it, weary all. Weary all. <laughs> planted his staff, sort of like the staff of, of uh, Jesse in the Bible, which sprouted and is the Glastonbury, holy Glastonbury thorn. Which, uh, how many generations later, is still up there on Weary all yes. Hill and, and being destroyed now by forces of evil or knows forces what. of the dark or by uh, some long-standing enmity between the landowner and someone else. Anyway, this, this tree, which wasn't the original anyway because nope. it was cut down during the Reformation, but another one grew from its, uh, its corpse or whatever. Yes. Um, and, but now somebody a few years ago chopped it all down. And this created a huge outpouring of grief and support for the tree. So they've now tried to get it started again, but somebody comes along and cuts it down again. They even put poison on it, yeah. I, I yeah. hear. So it's like, what is going on? By the way, this glass, one of these Glastonbury thorns, because they have been propagated, um, it blossoms in December. And it is clearly a kind of thorn that comes from the Middle East. And on Christmas Day, a sprig of this flowering thorn is sent to the Queen of England, or to the ruler of England. Right. To be on her breakfast plate, they say. Yeah. <laughs> and back to the Abbey. So yeah. the Abbey may have been founded originally as, there, there was a, something called the Old Church, and it may have been founded by Joseph of Arimathy, who came there with 12 note followers when he came to where all hill and planted his staff after the crucifixion of Jesus. Or depending on who you read, it could have been founded by Mary and Joseph of Armadie, who may have been the, 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 the burial found in 11 something or other on 1109 which, on the yeah. Abbey grounds. Which, which is, means that those bodies, one of them, would have been Mary, Mary the mother of Jesus. Right. And Joseph of Arimathea, the great uncle of Jesus, right. who was a mineral merchant who may well have traveled to England. That's true. But so back to, I mean, we're as disconnected in the story as Glastonbury is. So you have these bodies, the graves were found in, I think, 1189, 1192, after massive fire that destroyed the abbey, which by that time had become the most powerful in England based on its history as the foundational church founded maybe in A.D. 37, right after the crucifixion, uh, by Joseph of Arimathea and maybe by Mary. So you have this church that was independent of Rome. And independent of, of any oversight. Any oversight local. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And grew to be immense because of its claim for primacy. Then it was destroyed in a massive fire in don't quote me, I think 1189. Something in something. that vicinity. Uh, and then, miraculously, these graves were discovered, which were attributed, because there was a lead cross found on top, attributed to... Um, King Arthur, Arthur and, and Guinevere. Guinevere <laughs> which again brought huge quantities of tourism, spiritual tourism, pilgrimage. Right, yes. Uh, and money to the site. And it thrived again until it was destroyed in 1539 as part of the um, takeover by King Henry VIII of the church in his reformation uh, and his establishment of the Church of England with himself as head. So he destroyed the Church of England, the original ancient Church of England, which gave it primacy it, it doesn't make any sense, but right. he did destroy it and, and ritually murdered. Ritual murder uh, of the abbot and two of the monks. The they dragged them, monks. Yep. dragged them up to the top of the tour, hung them, cut off their heads, dismembered uh, them, dismembered them, boiled, sent the parts. Boiled, uh, the uh, abbot uh, parts in pitch and sent them around the country as a warning. It is too bizarre. But anyway. Yes. Anyway. And then, so, that's Glastonbury. I mean, it is this amazing, powerful place. There's something going on deep 
in the land itself, all that water that rises, that forms geomantic energies, uh, under the Tor, elsewhere, lots of wells, sacred land for millennia, clearly before Christianity came. And destroyed and destroyed and destroyed over and over again. I was thinking this morning yeah. of the palimpsest, the, uh, the the scraping clean of... Uh, of uh, parchments. Of parchments yeah. and, and rewriting. And over again. Yeah. Uh, all those things are still there. So that's the end of part one of our conversation about Glastonbury, an enigma wrapped in a mystery. Stay tuned for part two, which is coming shortly. And in the meantime, go to www.powerfulplaces.info to learn more about us and our travels.